for some live streams, uh, channel reviews. Let's get into it. The first channel we are going to look at today is from Sugar Cat. Hello to you, 953 subscribers. Uh, you have a cat on your channel banner. You do new videos daily at 2 p.m. Eastern time, so we know exactly what your schedule is. The big question I would be asking from your channel banner straight away is, what is the channel about? Is it about cats? Is it about gaming? Is it about vlogging? Perhaps we need a bit more of a pitch on your channel banner. Another thing I would also say, say is you've got your social media links here. Do you really need them because you have a social media links down there? I know you might say, yeah, those don't necessarily appear on a mobile device, but your mobile cutoff point is probably going to be about here as well, which means that they might not be able to see your full username for the social media aspects. So maybe a quick bit of spring cleaning there on the channel banner uh, for these social media points. To be honest, I probably won't, wouldn't even bother including them and I'd have more of a, a value proposition for your content to tell people exactly what your content is about. If I go to the about section, it's the adventures of a normal Canadian guy who will try his best not to look like a complete gaming noob. Okay, so you've hinted here that it's about gaming, playthroughs, let's watch game trailers and so on. So a bit more of inf information there. Maybe you want to include some sort of gaming graphics in the background, like a controller or the games that you play. Something along those lines may help. Now, let's have a look at what I think here is a channel trailer. It's uh, 1 minute 20. I had a quick look before, but I'm going to have another look now. And let us know what you think in the comments about this particular channel trailer. Hello and welcome to Vanilla Minecraft, everybody! Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Sugar Cat Plays. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sugar Cat Plays. Hey, everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Spooky Sundays with Sugar Cat. Woo! Oh, look at you! Special enemy Temmy appears here to defeat you. You can defeat me with your cuteness. Good morning. So I think from the first 30 seconds of this, what seems to be a channel trailer, trailer, we're getting a good idea of what this content is going to be about. These Let's Play versions of, would it be less popular games? Or I, I, I've completely dropped out of a gaming scene, so I don't know what these uh, games are in particular. I saw Minecraft at the top though, so uh, that seems to be the general gist of what we're doing here. We can see uh, parts of your character already, uh, kind of an eccentric, but a very uh, livable, approachable style. Trailer is 1 minute 23. Again, I always challenge people to try and get a trailer into 45 seconds. Uh, you might want to include in the first five seconds that, uh, hello, I'm Sugar Cat. Here's what we do here, perhaps. But you do tend, you do kind of include that in the, uh, the quick montage of introductions that you have there. So a relatively good channel trailer, I think, there. Uh, post in regularity, you have uploads as your play, uh, playlist, which is fine. And it looks as if you're posting videos on a very regular basis. Look at that. You probably posted a video uh, just as you were joining this live stream, uh, which was eight minutes ago. So fairly regular posting of uploads. You've got your popular ones here to show that you do have some breakthrough videos. Interesting here already, we're seeing from the vidIQ likes to dislikes ratio. Do you create controversial content or content that people are maybe not a big fan of? Have you been able to take some feedback off that? Although that is, this is your most popular content, so maybe you're just getting more of a, dis uh, more of a, I guess, reaction to them. But I'm also noticing that your likes and dislikes are fairly low compared to your channel views there on the most viewed one. So where did those views come from as well? That may be a, a question we need to ask a little later on. Playlist for, I guess, a particular game here. Um, some Doki Doki Literature Club, whatever that is. And then creative playlists. So uh, a, a channel layout that has a number of uh, good things in it. Go to the videos now. Let's have a look at your thumbnails. Okay, so if you just jump onto somebody's channel and then you look at the thumbnails and what is what is missing here, would you say, from all of these thumbnails? 
And my personal opinion would be a theme or a tone or a consistency of the branding. You are in thumbnails, which is good if you're the star attraction of the content, but they seem to jump very much in terms of color theme. And if you were to maybe drop this into a, what you would call pick and mix of thumbnails with other channels, would you be able to clearly identify that uh, this is from the same channel creator, this is from the same channel creator, this is from the same channel creator. It might take a little bit of effort. So maybe more consistency theme would help with the thumbnails a little bit here. You talk about your thumbnails, be uh, your channel being on different games, but I'm struggling to see here the, the theme of gaming here. I can see uh, you've used a monitor in a couple of examples, um, but again, I'm not really sure if this is clear in the thumbnails. I'm not really getting a strong vibe of what your content is about uh, from the thumbnails. Looking at the titles, we say, I am here as you are. I am he as you are he. Stories Untold Chapter 1. Is this from a game, I think, maybe? I'm not sure. Sorry for your loss from even number one. Go away, yet another exhausting day. Are my eyes even real? <laughs> sugar, sugar Deck Vlog. So you Sugar Cat or Sugar Deck? Sugar Deck Vlog 8. Uh, the cat came back. So, again, maybe a lack of focus, I might suggest, in your content. What do you really want to focus on and uh, do you have an audience that's consistently coming back for these uh, videos? Like if, if we look at the view counts, we can see one here with 138 views, one with 48 views, another one with 18 views. So there's already a, a big mix between audience interest in each of these videos. You have nearly a thousand subscribers, but they don't seem to be sticking with your content for whatever reason. So it may be that you want to decide in the next couple of days, I'm going to focus on this particular video game and this walkthrough for the next five or six videos and really find out whether there is an audience here. If it's not, pivot to another game or uh, so on. It feels like when I look at your videos that you're just, you're making videos that are for you, but aren't necessarily for your audience. And it's kind of more, it seems to be more like 90% you, 10% audience. And yes, I absolutely agree with the video creator desire to produce stuff that sustains you and nourishes your creative outlet. But you've also got to remember that there's an audience here who've subscribed to you with an expectation of a certain type of content. And it seems to be that, that you're not delivering on that content on, on, a, on occasion. Um, Thumbnail-wise, in general, uh, I think some thumbnails work better than others. Just seeing if I can find a particularly good example of a thumbnail, which I would suggest you use a, a bit more. I mean, this is a, a good example, although it's not necessarily about your content in particular, it's the, the, about the YouTube policy changes. I like the the fact that you've just, you're concentrating on one subject, which is yourself, and then a, a contrasting background with colors, and then two clear symbols to tell a story. Uh, and this is a, a fairly interesting one as well, uh, in that you have a phone with you on it, but it's about Pokemon. So maybe you could include some Pokemon style graphics, maybe just in, in here to fill up the screen a, a little bit, a bit might be an idea. Now I'm just seeing here, you've hit 900 subs, but that was four months ago. So you've been growing relatively slowly as well. So again, maybe it's the idea of focus that's just being lost in your content. Now, picking a video is going to be difficult here because I'm not sure which ones represent your your general content. So let's try and pick one. Let's go. I mean, it, there's, there's a couple here when you were looking at. These all look as if they're from the same game, perhaps, just because of the color of the background of the thumbnails. So we're going to go with the curse of the meatballs. Check, please. Apparently, I didn't stuff the balls in her face quick enough. 
How's it going everybody? My name's Sugar Count and welcome to a game called Check Please. You ever think that you wanted a weird Canadian guy to give you dating advice? This is it. I'm gonna teach you how to woo the ladies or the men if you're a lady or the ladies if you're a lady or the men if you're a man. Doesn't matter. This is a physics-based control game where I kind of have control of like my hand with the clickety clickety clack. Let's go. We're on a date. Oh, and she looks strung out already. It's a little dark in here. So, in contrast to the way you pitch your videos, the actual content inside the, inside the video seems really entertaining and fun, like we're 30 seconds into this video, I already have a clear idea of what the video is about, you've cracked a couple of jokes and I'm already engaging with your personality. So I think we just need to uh, pitch the videos a, a bit better if possible. Uh, like, is check please, is that quite a niche game? I, I like the idea of the, um, the the title there, which is a bit of a teaser leading the curse of the meatballs. It's a bit cryptic, and maybe that's going to help with the um, the viewer. Like, what does that mean? The curse of the meatballs. Interesting. But if I go back to the thumbnail, if I look, maybe there's not enough there. Like, because I don't know that this is about a video game. If I look at the thumbnail, because I've never heard of the game. Check please. So maybe you need a a video game graphic in there. Uh, is that a meatball? It looks like spaghetti meatballs, but maybe you just need an image of a meatball rather than uh, meatballs and spaghetti because it kind of drowns into the background again with the, the thumbnail. And perhaps it needs an emo emoji or some sort of more reaction. Um, so I think, yeah, that, that could be the idea with just how to clean up the thumbnails a little bit but yeah as i said the content here, here can you like the seems candle to be really entertaining good as for optimization lovely to see there on the vidiq optimization checklist that you're hitting pretty much all the uh, marks there uh, if you want to pin a comment that might just help a little bit with engagement but one thing there isn't too bad and with tags let's have a look then check please meatballs hmm. is anybody searching for that term maybe not um, but it's certainly one that you could, could include in your tags. I'm just going to do a quick search. Sorry, that's the bell. Pressing it in the wrong place. If I just do check, please, game. What what additional tags could you potentially use here for this? Is it check, please, with an exclamation mark? Would that help? Let's just do a quick search. Okay, so here's perhaps your competition that you have and it seems like a very niche subject only like a thousand five hundred searches but there are channels here with a uh, low subscriber base but some fairly decent views two and a half thousand there uh wow well, there's one hit well chat septic is going to get a million views of course uh, and there are other people looking at it. So I think you are in the right area. You seem to be capitalizing on a game that's fairly recent and other channels are, are covering. And I think there is an opportunity here to break into this area. Because the channels here have 1,000 subscribers, that's got 1,500 views. So I think for you... This would be like the, a good example of a video to check out in terms of their optimization, the type of content that they're doing for this particular video because they've got as many views as subscribers, which is certainly good. So yeah, maybe just do a quick search for uh, check please game, see what tags they're using and see if um, there is anything else you could capitalize on. If you were going to continue to cover this game, it may be that you've already moved on from this and it does seem to be the case in your uh, can you like the candle your channel itself so tag wise yeah maybe the, there's a, a good selection of tags there you may want to include a check please let's play maybe as an additional one uh, as for your description ever get the feeling that nothing you do on a date is right you've come to the right place then sugar clats dating surface in check please we'll go over the basics and learn how to stuff meatballs in your date's face. Entertaining stuff there. So you have six comments, but it looks as if you replying to the comments that have been there. So engagement is not fantastic there in terms of uh, comments, but you have only 100 views on this one. Uh, but I think the summary of this channel review is that you have some entertaining 
uh, content, whenever I look at a video, that's good. Maybe the focus and the delivery and the pitch in the thumbnails needs a little bit of work. So that is our first review today, and it is Sugar Cat. I hope you find uh, that constructive uh, um, feedback there, and uh, hopefully you can take your channel to the next level if you're continuing to make videos there. Who do we have next in the lineup for channel reviews? The Doberman should hopefully be lining one up here uh, for us to look at very soon. And of course, um, while I'm giving uh, advice here, do make sure that um, you're posting your own thoughts and comments in the uh, the channel in the in the uh, get my hands right in all of the chat that's coming up here on the the uh, left hand side of your screen. I think everything's all opposite when I do the live stream, uh, but I'm sure there'll be lots of fantastic advice uh, coming through there. Uh, so. Uh, with any luck, we should have a channel to review soon. I'm still waiting uh, for Doberman to just get back to me here. Uh, I may look at another one, though, if he's uh, unavailable at the moment. Let's see if I can find uh, one of our lovely uh, channels to review. Let's see if I can bring one up here. My spelling is also terrible, so uh, bear with me here as I try and find a channel. Might want to do the uh, the Jeopardy music at this point uh, to uh, entertain yourselves until we have the next channel up. Oh, right. Okay, we got an, we got an update here. Uh, the power has gone off uh, with our uh, in our moderator's house, the Doberman. So he uh, he looks to be struggling a little bit. So we we're, we're gonna keep going here, Doberman. I hope you have a power up as soon as possible. But in the meantime, uh, what we'll do is. Uh, bring up a channel to review. I know I keep repeating myself. It's one of these typical live stream issues that we have, but I think we're just about there with this one. Uh, okay, so I think we're going to move in for the review here, which is going to be... Are we ready? Let's get this on screen. Okay, we're back to channel reviews. Here we go. Ed... Dana or Dana, uh, your channel here clearly looks to be about music, specifically guitars, maybe. Uh, if I was to offer some more advice on the channel banner immediately, this feels like a stock photo. So personalize it, maybe include your uh, value proposition, the message that really represents your channel as good as possible. You have a thousand subscribers, 350,000 views. This channel is dedicated to music industry, the music, the music industry and guitar playing. It's also contains vid, also contains videos on guitar repair, setup and maintenance. Okay, so interesting question here. Uh, your interest is music. Your passion seems to be guitars, and you've done some repair, setup and maintenance ones. So, which is going to be the most important one for you at this point? I suspect from the channel that you have here with 350,000 views, you're going to have some sort of viral, very successful videos within there in the how-to educational area. And it may be that you focus on that particular niche when you have one of those videos that's been discovered. Let's just jump straight to that now and see if we can identify what would be your most popular, uh, uh, successful video here. All right, so you haven't got a super viral video, but it looks to be that you have some success with videos on, it looks like amps and amp equipment potentially there. So I would definitely think about maybe focusing on those sorts of videos in the short term to see if you have any success with them. They're all relatively old though as well, like over a year old. Uh, so maybe they built up some popularity over time. Also, we're gonna need to have a quick look at your thumbnails in a little bit, but let's go back to the channel in general now. Hey, 
Thank you. So your introduction video to your channel just seems to be a random video that you maybe plucked from your uh, content. I think a good thing here would be an introduction video about 45 seconds long. You seem to appear in front of a camera on some of your videos, so I you should probably look at doing that. Just like, Hello, my name's Ed Dana. I love music, you love music, this is what we do here type of introduction with some B-roll uh, maybe of use. Uh, so you've got some posted videos and ooh, you're posting videos on a fairly regular basis. Looks as if you have some, uh, how would I put this, some polarizing uh, content. You seem to be getting uh, some dislikes that are taking it down to the 70% like range, which is uh, quite unusual for a channel to be having so many dislikes on a regular basis. So is there a particular fan who's not a fan of your content and is just trolling it? Or is this something maybe to pay attention to that it's not quite working on your content uh, potentially? Right. Your videos. First thing I can see is uh, thumbnails. We need to do some custom thumbnails. It looks like you're taking a uh, freeze frame or one of the YouTube suggested thumbnail images from your content. And very quickly I can see that I, this one looks to be a custom thumbnail. Whether you borrowed it from somebody uh, is a question for another time. But this looks to be a specific uh, thumbnail and you can see potentially how much of a more of an impact it has this one has 700 views versus your other videos which tend to have about a hundred views it looks like now for a channel with a thousand subscribers a hundred views is about 10% of your subscriber base maybe you can up that a little bit but at least you have some consistency like you're posting videos on a very regular basis here looks to be almost one a day which is is good and they're all of a significant length 10 minutes 5 minutes 12 minutes it would be interesting to know what your audience retention is there maybe check on that and see if people are staying with your content but yeah in terms of thumbnails i mean let's if we took the titles out of the equation for a second uh if we look at this uh thumbnail that one that one this one here these could almost all be from exactly the same uh, video with exactly the same thumbnail and they would say as little about the content as all of these thumbnails. There needs to be maybe a an emotional attachment like this one here with is rock and roll dead? Um, it should maybe have a question mark in there and you with maybe a, a pondering look or um it says in reaction to vi it's a reaction video to who because the title's cut off it's a reaction to video kim's workshop so maybe you want to include a picture of uh video kim in the thumbnail as well um just to add a tease or an a, a visual element to the story which i think would um help your thumbnails and another thing is when you look at these thumbnails, you are sort of blending in with the background of your room here. Um, so if you can, but this then requires some uh, bit of a technical ex or experience with software, is like cut yourself out and then maybe change the background to something solid or blur the background um, to help visualize the focus of a thumbnail which is is you or whatever uh, you're looking at now let's have a look at the, uh, the titles like when you seem to ask questions uh it looks like you're having some more feedback like is rock and roll dead that seems to get some engagement there is we'll have to have a look at the comments and see if there's any questions there uh, another one is rock and roll dead are you trying to capitalize on is the rock and roll dead keyword as a potential area to look into youtube channel queen cover reaction is rock and roll dead so another one where is rock and roll dead so i can see a theme going on here
And then I'm just quickly going through some of your titles and I'm seeing again that you're covering a lot of different subjects and topics in the guitar slash music um, area. This is another interesting one here. This is an interesting, intriguing thumbnail where you are a bit more in focus and the background is a bit more blended out. There's a color contrast and it's one where you've got 700 views. So there are micro examples here of when uh, more, f more thought is put into the thumbnail, it has uh, more of an impact. Okay, let's have a look at one of your videos. See you on the optimization and the... Hey, what's up everybody at Data and Dating YouTube channel. Another reaction video, this time to Kim's Workshop. This is a guy from, I believe, Denmark. I've known him for quite a while. He's even a Facebook friend of mine and he's always posting in his native language on Facebook. And you know, I don't know what the posts say. I can't read them. But he, he posts in English a lot, too. And he always... So, I didn't quite understand this bit, the intro here. About to get uh, oh, so you're saying that you're about to get hammered by some weather. I'm not sure how that relates to the content of the video. It was a bit confusing there. Um... But then once you go into the video, you seem very confident in front of camera and talk, and probably getting into quite a detailed discussion about the reaction to um, being rock and roll being dead. Um, how, uh, in terms of, okay, so it looks as if, I'm just quickly going through the timeline and it looks as if you are switching through the videos, switching through the camera angles a bit, you start in front of camera and then you quickly switch to I guess you watching the video and reacting to it. Optimization wise, some uh, fundamental things that are missing here. Uh, you're not adding cards or end screens to your videos. So cards will be things that will pop up in the top right hand corner here, which will suggest alternative videos. Like you could maybe suggest uh, Kim's original uh, video, Kim's original video in the cards that might uh, be of help. Uh, to keep people on YouTube or push people to more of your content. End screens, like when people get to the end of your content, you want to be always pushing those people to watch more of your content rather than letting YouTube suggest what they should watch next because they might exit your sphere of YouTube and you definitely want them to be watching as much of your content as possible. So yeah, just some... Uh, Simple things that can be fixed in a couple of minutes here, uh, which would help. Saying uh, the optimization checklist is also saying that your videos are a little too short, your descriptions are too short. Uh, yeah, so you'd want to try and include more of a description of your content in the first two or three lines of your video to help with um, indexing of your videos. As for tags, Ed, Dana, Ed, Dana, or Dana, I would be putting these channel tags to the very bottom of your list, and I would be including a lot more of the theme tags of Is Rock and Roll Dead? Like, if I put this in here, Is Rock and Roll Dead? I mean, let's, put, let's just add that. You could be including Is Rock and Roll Dead? And then including the particular bands that are mentioned. Or is Rock and Roll Dead in 2018? That might be a good uh, recent themed type of content to produce. Or, or is Rock and Roll Dead since this happened or that happened? Or these long tail keywords about is Rock and Roll Dead may help. Rather than including things such as home recording, gear reviews, music. Is the video really about this? Is this specific video really about... Uh, gear reviews and humor and music. If it's not, then take them out of there and be as specific as possible uh, with your keywords. And I think that would really help. Again, let, let's just do a search for Is Rock and Roll Dead and see what type of keywords are being used by any channels which are smaller and 
perhaps making a breakthrough in this area. Just got to try and find a smaller channel, which has had success here uh, with some contents. They all seem to be fairly large channels here. So this is a keyword that may be difficult to uh, uh, break into as regards to content. But there seems to be one here like, um, so specifically Pete Townsend on the death of rock and roll. Um, it's from Sky Art, so uh, I guess that's very easy for them to get some ranking on there. So yeah, maybe a bit of research on is rock and roll dead or something along these this search term to maybe find out what channels are doing that are successful in this area may help. So I think summaries for you, Ed, uh, Dana, Dana, are be a bit clearer on your uh, value proposition about are you about music or are you about guitars or are you about uh, reviews? Be much more specific than that. Uh, it looks as if you've abandoned the equipment type reviews, uh, which were successful in the past. Is there any particular reason why you did that? Did you just not find it interesting? It might be something to revisit uh, just due to the success of uh, some of these uh, videos up here. And yeah, a bit more optimization on your videos in terms of the cards and the end screens, I think would really help your channel. Uh, so there we are, that's Ed Dana. Uh, thank you for being the subject of a vidIQ uh, channel review. Uh, what's the story uh, like for you then, Doberman Guy? Do you have your, do you have internet back and can you suggest channels? Uh, be lovely to find out. He has, he sent me one, so that's awesome. We can jump straight into the next live stream, um, channel review. And that is going to be... Festive Zigzag. New videos uploaded every Thursday. My first question is, what are your videos about if you're uploading every Thursday? Uh, is it about video gaming? Is it about vlogging? Is it about makeup and tutorials? Would really like to know that from the channel banner, if possible. 338 subscribers, 20,000 views, no channel description at all. Okay, first thing I want you to do, here's a, get my light bulb up here. First thing I want you to do after this channel review is fill out a description and tell people what your channel's about. It's already looking like you don't know what your value proposition is or what what the value of your channel is what message are you trying to say to your audience with the content that you're producing as the first thing i'll try and find out So, a video montage of what looks to be you shooting some Lego people in a video game. So, we think it's about gaming at this point. Do we know anything else? Let's have a look at the rest of the channel. So, popular uploads. Roblox. You did some Roblox streaming nine months ago. And you had a very once very successful one. 18,000 views. And then, a, and then after that, you're down in a 500, 400 view range for your most popular videos. Again... Uh, likes and dislikes seem to be a little bit on the low side in terms of anything above green is usually that your audience is reacting well to the content that you're producing. If it drops below 90%, then on one off occasion that might be okay. But when it drops down to the reds, like less than 80%, there's usually something potentially fundamentally wrong with your content that's just not working out with your audience. But these are older videos. Um... And yeah, again, a lack of channel foundations here. We've got no description. The channel banner is relatively bland in that we festive zigzag. I don't know how that relates to the content that you produce. And other than your upload schedule, um, we don't know what type of videos you're producing except for when we start to see some thumbnails. Jump into the thumbnails themselves. So you have taken a break now, I see. So you produced some videos nine months ago 
and then you took a big six month break and you started producing videos again and it looks like Fortnite is the topic of your content now. So it's good that you've uh, you've produced what only like you're only 13 videos into your YouTube uh, life at the moment. So still a long way to go and uh, great to see that you've already started to produce some content. Awesome stuff. And you're doing some test streams. Please don't watch this. That's interesting that you would um, make some test streams public. But there we are. Uh, so thumbnail wise, yeah, some you are creating thumbnails, which is fantastic as a brand new channel. The next thing you'll need to think about is how each thumbnail tells a different story for the content that you're watching. You can't just repeat the same thumbnail over and over again and and hope that it works. Um, so yeah, something to certainly consider here. Uh, and I, I would also ask: is you had a super, you had a gradually increasing interest in your Roblox live streams nine months ago and then you just stopped doing that after your most successful one so i guess the hundreds of subscribers who joined you for these videos uh i just have nothing to watch now are they interested in fortnite that will be uh probably a question that and the answer is no so you're starting again from scratch it looks like but each of these videos do have 100 percent likes Although it looks as if it's just the one like on each of them, two on that one. Okay, so yeah, very early days. It now looks as if you're going to be looking at Fortnite, I think. That's going to be a very hard market to break into because it's so saturated. So really think about the specific videos that you want to produce. Like answering questions that haven't been answered on a particular game uh, before uh, and so on. There's some long videos here as well. We'll have a look at this one. Festive is live hangout and see what happens. Okay, I'm not really sure what this video is about. Looks as if you're, again, testing with live streams. So, yeah, no video tags, uh, descriptions. Okay, I think we need to do rewind here. Your channel is just beginning. You haven't really established what you want to do with your content yet, it seems like. So when you think about the next videos that you make, uh, think about who am I going to create content for? If it's for uh, video gamers who are interested in Fortnite, that's absolutely fine. But when you're watching other videos about Fortnite, think about... The content that I would like to see that nobody's done yet on this game and then produce that content and do it for 5, 10, 20 videos, just experimenting like you've done with your test live streams. Just keep experimenting to find out what clicks with you and what clicks with your audience. And then you need to think about the optimization with the uh, titles. Uh, uh, we've got one here, like Fortnite's worst player dies before landing. We'll have a quick look at this one. Looks as if it's got a bit of work done with it. Um, another thing I would say is that I haven't heard you or I don't know anything about you as a video creator on your content either. Uh, this is just a replay. Uh, should it include some commentary on it or not? Uh, that would be something that we might need to... Uh, no, is somebody going to watch this video for, was it, 45 seconds, waiting for the payoff to this content? That's something else that really you need to find out from uh, what you're doing with the videos that you make. Okay, now that's really the end of the video. Did it deliver on its promise? Were you interested in those 45 seconds? Um, certainly something that we would, you would need to find out in your audience retention and any feedback you get from your contents. So uh, tag wise, it does look as if you're including some good long tail keywords for, to try and break into this Fortnite area, but it's always going to be, um, a difficult one to break into. So just be prepared for a lot of hard work ahead. Uh, in the Fortnite area, but maybe this is your practice practice ground. You can develop your video formats, 
the way you creatively tell a story in your videos before you move on to your next topic of uh, conversation for video for for videos on your channel. So I think this uh, this needs to be one where you work on your channel a little bit, create another 10, 20 videos, make sure that the channel layout has some structure to it, and then come back for a another uh, live stream channel review uh, when we have more to see. So best of luck. Uh, I've forgotten your name. Festive Zigzag uh, with your channel. Um, hope you don't take the, the criticism too harshly there. I didn't really realize how uh, underdeveloped the channel was when I first looked at it. And I guess the one last thing to look at is, could you do anything with your Roblox videos here? Because it seems that they were very successful. And hey, you're using the Hey guys, what's poppin'? Oh, it is me, Festive Zigzag. What is up with your life? So you are saying that uh, you are in on uh, narrating here, and maybe that's one of the reasons why the video is more successful. Could you do that in your Fortnite gameplay uh, when you jump into that? Okay, that was uh, festive zigzag there, and let's move on to the next channel to review. Uh, Doberman is serving up a lot of new channels here. Thank you very much. Uh, you are such a helpful chap all the time right we've already done that one let's uh, bring up another one we've already done that one so we're getting there we've got more channels to uh, review here okay i don't think i've done this one before we are going to be looking at next so far the theme has been smallish channels and the channel we are going to look at now is Peddling with Paul. So immediately on this channel, we understand that it's something to do with cycling. And it kind of feels like a bloggy style channel with the fact that we're going to be doing something with a person. 181 subscribers, so still a relatively small channel 32,000 views you're all about mountain bike related content filmed but mostly by you it's hard to shoot yourself i can imagine it's very hard to do that when you're on a bike so you're doing a couple of things describing uh, the challenges that you have here as a vlogging cyclist uh, lots of things going on there in what you do. So we have an idea of your channel already. Do you have a channel trailer? Yes, you do. 45 seconds long as well, so great start. What's up, guys? Welcome to Pedaling with Paul. I'm Paul. This channel is going to be mountain bike related. Mountain bikes, mountain bikes, mountain bikes. Or as I say in my local shop, bikes, bikes, bikes. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Remember to click that subscribe button. Thumb up like if you like the videos. Thumb up like if you don't like the videos. And tell me why you don't like the videos. Yeah, tell me why you do like the videos. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you guys like, don't like. So I got stuff to work on. All right, guys, enjoy. Thanks for pedaling with me. I would just take off this bit here, this music bit, and I would jump straight into What's up, guys? You introducing Welcome to yourself. Pedaling with Paul with a bit of b-roll as well from your content but other than that um it's a fairly decent channel uh trailer and there was something i really liked at the end what did you say let's just play that enjoy again. thanks for pedaling with me thanks for pedaling with me that seems like a a value proposition there of some sort some sort there like we're on this shared journey of, of riding on bikes thanks for pedaling with me that could be a really interesting uh, way to develop your content if you haven't already done so. So I, I do like that. Check out these uh, videos that others enjoy. So uh, is this your most popular videos potentially, or it's um, uh, or it's one of these? Welcome to my channel. Here's what we do here, which is a good uh, playlist to have. So yeah, it, so it's not just your popular ones. It's slightly different to that. Uh, you have. Uh, created a custom playlist, which is good to see. Popular uploads here. Uh, one video has got 22,000 views, which is good. We would like to see a playlist which shows 
uh, your most recent uploads so we have an understanding of your video consistency to find out whether you post once a week, uh, once every two weeks. So maybe include that uh, further up if you don't have it. So yeah, yeah, your current uploads is here, way down the list. Maybe just bring that up a little bit if possible. Uh, just so that we know how often you are posting. But a well thought out set of playlists for your channel. I'm starting to see something a little bit on your thumbnails though. This looks to be a, an ish, a case of you, you're thinking really hard about your thumbnails and putting quite a lot of effort into them uh, to a certain extent, but they are almost too overdone done if we look at for example this has to be as shaky as beep what are we looking at here are we looking at what a shaky camera or what what's the what's the focus of this video and the reason i ask that is because when you made your thumbnail did you shrink it down to 25 percent when you're making a thumbnail, you have to consider that you see in all its glory, this big, beautiful thumbnail, but the majority of your audience are going to see it uh, like this on a suggested video column, on a mobile device, and the detail can be lost so quickly in a thumbnail. And that's why it's very important to have thumbnails that can be seen uh, and identified at a much smaller size. And I think a lot of these thumbnails suffer from this uh, in, in that particular sense. Like, I know the story that I want to tell. I'm going to include some text in there to help tell that story. Again, whether that's very necessary. On this one, for example, what's that new bike you said? Hot, what, not my new bike check plus build or hot. My, yeah, I, I'm, I think it's not my new bike check plus build, which I don't really understand as a thumbnail so do you need all of this text in the thumbnails because it makes it difficult to read something to consider there but you have a branding so we can see that your logo is there maybe you just want to take out the text completely i think this is a, a better thumbnail um as we can see two people just chilling on a bike kind of as a live stream and I'm sure you're finding that live streams can be very difficult to pull in an audience when you have a smaller channel, uh, as you uh, as you have done there. What, yeah, like 11 and 19 views versus the average, which tends to be 150 views, 80 views. So what I'm what I'm also seeing here is that you do seem to have a core audience, like you have a healthy number of views versus your subscriber base, which is good to see. And I think that's probably because you're posting on such a regular basis that these uh, people seem to be coming back on a on a regular basis, which is good. But I think the thumbnails need to uh, do a lot more uh, for your videos, I would suggest. Just going to have a look at some of your titles now. New Bike Day 2018, Diamondback Catch 2. Is that... A particular video, particular type of bike. Let's have a look at it and let's watch one of your What's intros. Up, that is? Paul here. How many of you guys ever just see a bike shop, decide, hey, it's a bike shop. I just walk inside. Well, I'm that type of guy. This time I've got a good reason. It's new bike day. It's not my new bike, but we're doing a bike check, and if you hang tight till the end, there's going to be a time lapse of the build. And what do we have here? Diamondback. This is a brand new 2018 Diamondback Catch 27.5 Plus. This bad boy's equipped with a rock shot. I'm interested to see the time, the time lapse back at the end of this. Let's see if you, you do deliver on your promise. Is the time lapse somewhere there? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Interesting. So I, I like the narrative of your videos. It's like welcome to this video here's what we're going to do here and at the end stick around because you might see a, a, a time lapse or um i'm going to deliver something at the end of this video but you've got to stick around to watch it and i do like that as a a tool of um 
of video storytelling. Brilliant to see that your optimization is uh, well on on course there. And here we are. Yeah, I thought you might uh, include some specific keywords which would help uh, rank here for what looks to be the Diamondback Catch Bike. So good use of keywords there. Um, I think you might want to invest in some new audio. I was just listening to it and it sounded a little... Sound like there was a lot of background noise on your microphone. So if you could maybe find a better microphone, that would help. I, I, the thing that people always suggest improving first on your equipment is audio. And that was I just picked up um, the quality of the audio almost immediately uh, when we were looking at your video. Uh, but otherwise, I think the, the storytelling in the video was good. Is your audience retention relatively high? I suspect it will be. You've got good tags there. Um, not too many comments. Really looks like you were talking a bit to Lucas Durham. Um, but some potential there. I think in summary, the channel has a good gra a good basis of um, of your ground a good grounding for your channel. And looking at your most popular ones like. Why did this one do so well? So guys, had a little pause here, a doing a quick ago. review on the bike mate. Not much engagement, but it looks as if when you're using these specific keywords, you're ranking highly for them, and sometimes you get a bit of a breakout video, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, again, good optimization there. But yeah, I definitely think uh, one place you want to concentrate on is your thumbnails and making them tell a better story if possible. Again, this is another one where it's a little better in terms of its thumbnail. We can see somebody crashing on the bike there and the background isn't too overpowering in this particular video. So yeah, um, I think thumbnails is probably the, the place to work on most and uh, maybe improving your audio if you can, unless it was just a one-off on that particular video uh, where it wasn't that good. Okay, what we're going to do now is take a very quick break, probably only about a minute, uh, just so I can hydrate myself, and then we'll be back for another session of channel review. So we'll be back very shortly. <laughs> And we are be back. I bet you thought I was going for a restroom break, but that clear that definitely wasn't the case. I just needed to uh, make sure that something was uh, working properly on the computer, which it is, and so we can get back to our reviews. Now, this next one is going to be the Techie Guy. Uh, Liron, I apologize if I pronounce your name wrong here. It's Liron Sigev. Have I pronounced that right? With 5,000 subscribers and it's making technology simple. So some good fundamentals here already in that we can see that the channel is definitely about technology. You're saying that it's going to be about phones, gadgets and apps. So maybe uh, the handheld technology and making technology simple, the value proposition right there. So we all ha already have an understanding of where this channel is going to be going with its content. Two million views. What's the best cell phone? What's the best camera? What's the best smartphone? Which phone should I get? Questions that we all typically ask if we're going to uh, get a new phone. Uh, and you and this person is saying that they're going to make such 
choices uh, simple to to make. So we know what the channel's about. Uh, do you have a channel intro at this point, the techie guy? It doesn't look as if you do. It might be worth including a, a channel intro if possible, um, just to clearly say, hi, my name's Blah, uh, welcome to my channel, this is what we do here, and we're all about uh, making the right decisions for channel, for for consumers to buy the right mobile phones. We've covered all sorts of phones, the iPhone, the Galaxy S9, uh, Android phones, and you do lots of B-roll as you're doing that intro, uh, might be worth doing, potentially in the future, if you uh, want to. Uh, so... Playlist wise, looks as if you've got some playlists and you're including descriptions in your playlist, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, interesting teasing, uh, whoops, I pressed the button there. Interesting teasing titles there out. for uh, your playlist. Does this gadget work? Um, why is my, there we go. Does this gadget work? Gadgets are everywhere, but do they actually work? I review these gadgets to see if they live up to the hype before you spend money on them. An interesting use of a playlist with some in descriptions in there. We're going to come back to these thumbnails as well in a second because they look absolutely fantastic. And there's a familiar face there. Do you know who that person is? Anybody? He's uh, now one of the uh, vidIQ team members, Jerry Invest. Uh, make sure to keep an eye out for this chap appearing on the channel a lot more very soon. But I like the playlist. Uh... Talking tech with tech guy, um, I guess you could include a playlist that maybe bundles uh, these different playlists together and says, uh, welcome to uh, the techie guy, here's what we do here, maybe an example of a video from the most popular video from one playlist and another playlist might be an idea, and how often do you post would be the other question. Uh, because you don't have your reg your most recent uploads playlist in there, I don't think. So it might be worth just including that in your layout as well. But it's generally all put together uh, very nicely. Okay, we're going to have a, a light bulb moment here because uh, these thumbnails are fantastic. As I was talking about the um, the who Ed Dana, I think it was, with his music uh, videos, uh, mu music channel. And he had pictures of his room and the background could be very dominating. This is what you can do with those situations if possible. What um, Techie Guy has done here is uh, cut himself, uh, taken a picture, cut himself out, I think, and then he's done a... Uh, Photoshop effect. Is this multiply that you've done or, or is it burn where you've blended the background into a distinct colour? Um, maybe these colours match your particular um, series of videos and we can clearly see what the subject of the content is. In this case it's a, a microphone that's being reviewed. The best budget microphone uh, for YouTube users. Clearly identify that from the title and the description. And it has such an impact when you're searching through content for uh, the answers to your questions. So I think in terms of a template for thumbnails, these are absolutely exceptional. And another thing I'm noticing here is this channel has 5,000 subscribers. But look at the view counts here. 4,000, 7,000, 2,000, 3,000. All exceptional view counts for the size of the channel. So... That's either because this channel is ranking very high in search terms and is getting a lot of traffic from suggested videos and uh, people are finding this content regularly whenever he produces it, or he's got a very core audience and the audience knows exactly what videos he's going to produce and they always deliver on their promises to the subscriber. So even though this channel seems to have a small subscriber count, they have fantastic engagement uh, with the audience that is producing content about um, and he seems he seems to be able to jump 
two different topics as well. Like one's about Gmail, one's about like travel websites. Another one's about things you didn't know on the Samsung Galaxy S9. Seems as if you've done very well with this video as well, which has uh, got 50,000 views, uh, even though you probably didn't hit the Galaxy S9 as it was being released. So awesome stuff there. It's probably through the power of thumbnails and the um, the tags. In fact, yeah, let's let's just jump into one of these videos and find out if why it's successful. Up one of these successful. Well, watch the intro to your video first. If you've picked up one of these shiny new Galaxy S9 or S9 Plus, by now you would have set up your facial recognition and your emojis and all that good stuff. This is not what this video is about. <laughs> this video is about other tips and tricks every Galaxy Samsung owner should know, including a doorbell monitor and a baby monitor. Yes, all available on this phone. That intro is 20 seconds. Tease some weird and interesting things about a baby monitor for the phone. Told you what the video wasn't about, which is also interesting when you're looking for stuff on the Galaxy S9. Awesome introduction uh, to the content there. It's going to be interesting to see how these tags work out. Okay, so the tags are interesting in that you have some of the longer tail keywords such as settings to change and Galaxy S9 settings. Uh, S9 features settings lower down the list and then you have these broader keywords at the top such as your channel name, tech, how to review, uh, Samsung Galaxy S9. You may want to try experimenting, although it's been very successful in this video, you may want to try experimenting bringing those longer tail keywords to the top and taking these broader keywords such as uh, and your channel tags which you're always going to rank for, maybe bring them lower down the list it has been said in the Creator Academy tutorials that uh, order of tags is very, very, the relevancy of your tags can help categorize your content. And that's an example of good metadata. So maybe bringing that, those keywords up the list may help. And it could be keywords such as Things you didn't know about the Galaxy S9 as a, as a long tail keyword or Galaxy S9 things to know or Galaxy S9 best features you didn't know, like really long tail keywords. And just looking at the video in terms of uh, the engagement, it seems to be slightly low engagement, so only 700 likes for a 50,000 view video and only 50 comments. That may suggest that the video has been shared externally or it's one of these typical, typical examples where it's a tutorial, a how-to, they don't have that much engagement. Um, but in saying all that, a techie guy, you have some, uh, it seems as if you hit the jackpot almost with every single video with the view counts. I'm really impressed with the sustained view count of your, of your videos. Uh, let's have a look at your most popular ones and see if you had any other super breakthrough ones. So another one here with 10 things you must do in a Galaxy S7. It seems as if 10 things you must do or need to know may be uh, helpful. And it looks as if generally you seem to be answering questions that nobody else has answered on YouTube or doing it doing it better than everybody anybody else. You can also see here as well from these the videos that were very popular a couple of years ago how your thumbnails have developed uh, and you're doing producing much better thumbnails. I guess the other thing to say is because you may be asking right now, well, why was I getting more views two or three years ago compared to now, where I seem to have um, sustained but relatively low views? And I guess. The answer could be, like for many saturated markets, is that there's a lot of competition coming into the area and you're competing, you're often competing in very crowded markets, but you do have a foothold in there. And I think you should continue doing what you're doing here in terms of the, the content that you're producing. It's of a very high quality. Um, maybe if you found any particular uh, videos uh, over the next couple of weeks that perform a little bit better, you could um, pivot onto those for the next two or three videos and see if you can catch the wave. Like for example, 10 things you didn't know about your Samsung Galaxy S9. Maybe you could have followed that up with uh, 10 things 
that I like about the Galaxy S9, 10 things I hate about the Galaxy S9, or more tips uh, that are around the Galaxy S9, or like a big camera guide. And maybe do that for three or four continuous videos, just to see if people who really enjoyed the last video subscribed, and then they see another video about a Samsung, Samsung Galaxy S9, and they continue to follow. But I know, certainly in the tech area, that you need to have these pivot points very quickly. Once interest goes away from a particular topic, you need to move away onto something else as quickly as possible. Like very recently, you did some videos about the Nintendo Switch, which seemed quite popular. So could you do some more on the Nintendo Switch? There's all these little topics that you're covering and having success with. Uh, are you able to make more than one video on, it, on these topics? I guess would be... Uh, a micro strategy to potentially use uh, because whenever you produce content you're ranking very well you're getting an audience every time uh, let's see just having a look now right now here's something interesting I've just spotted here you're getting low engagement of all of these videos so does that mean you you are you have an external source here where you can share this content where you're getting a lot of interest. That might be interesting to look at in your uh, suggested traffic. I'll be interested to know that. I think if you've got an external source where you can drive traffic to this content, brilliant. Maybe you need to have more calls to action, perhaps in these videos to get them to subscribe more. It always takes a little bit of research when I'm looking at these channels to see where the where the nuances are. And I think I may have just found it there. Uh, let's just do another random example here. Uh, this one's got 4,000 views, but it's only got four likes and it's only got one comment. So yeah, it looks as if you may have the advantage here of being able to share your content elsewhere on YouTube. So how do you make it more attractive to a YouTube audience. Maybe you need to have more calls to action to get them to subscribe. That might be the thought there. But anyway, congratulations on the content that you're producing and I hope you can find uh, more ways to organically get an audience watching on YouTube. Because I guess the other negative of what's happening here is if they're watching externally, it's like a one video and done. And that's probably neg a negative on the algorithm in terms of YouTube session start. So you get a session start for external views, but you probably also get the session end time. They're not staying on YouTube for very long. So some, I'd say, unique challenges that you have there uh, for your content. But it looks as if the content itself is brilliant and the thumbnails are awesome. Uh, so keep it up there, uh, the techie guy. Hope you found uh, some of that uh, channel review useful there. Okay, we're going to move on to another one now. We are what? Uh, probably got time for another two channel reviews here. What have you got lined up for me next, the Doberman guy? Just bringing up the next one. Okay, here we go. We are now going to have a look at Fab Jamira. Have I got your name right? I hope so. You have 131 subscribers. Your channel has 9,000 views and you've been around YouTube since 2014. Oh, let's just go back to your about. I, uh, it's me, Fab, and on, and on my channel I guess I do really fun challenges vlogs and do extremely funny parodies so parody comedy style channel congratulations on reaching 100 subscribers uh, in January we need to sort out this channel banner here I think flowers or stock or is it jellyfish I'm not quite sure yeah make your channel banner represent what you're about if it's pranks vlogs Get yourself in front of the um, viewers as quickly as possible and uh, maybe a, a value proposition as well there. Layout, uh, add a channel intro, include more playlists. Are you doing any playlists? That would be another question to ask. 
doesn't look as if you're really up, um, capitalizing on playlists. So if you do want to make videos about challenges, vlogs, and extremely funny parodies, you want to have three playlists. But again, thinking uh, broader scale, what do you enjoy doing most of all of these types of videos? Uh, maybe you want to focus on that uh, to begin with uh, as your channel begins to grow. But you have 100, 130 subscribers uh, with your channel. And how old is it? You've been doing videos for about, it looks regularly for about a year. And your view counts tend to be in the hundreds. So again, look, look at this. Awesome view counts uh, for your content. Uh, with 130 subscribers, you're getting views similar to subscribers, which is absolutely awesome. Brilliant stuff. Doesn't look as if you've produced any videos recently, though. Um, is there any particular reason for that? It seems as if your channel was starting to gain momentum uh, through the content that you were producing. And hopefully your audience would want to see more of those videos if possible, like capitalizing on trending topics such as Valentine's seem to work out with you though, with a hundred views. You've done very well on a Q&A as well. So people are interested in your content. I, I assure you that some video creators would be absolutely begging for the number of views that you're having with the subscriber size that you have. Um, some good things obviously going on in your content. Let's have a look at one of your videos and see why. One thing I would do, 20 seconds in, we haven't seen anything about the video, about the channel. So we haven't seen anything about the video that you're showing to your audience. Take out that intro bit. It's too long and doesn't serve any purpose. I would jump straight into your content right here um, rather than the intro. So that would be the first recommendation on your the content itself. Hi guys, it's me, Fadjima, and today I am here with... Aya! And... And today we are going to be doing something to do with Easter. Although we don't celebrate it, we thought it would be really fun, isn't it, guys? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> the way this game works... I, I really like your personality and the, the confidence you have in front of camera already. I think that's absolutely awesome. I can see uh, that you're a very engaging video creator. So make sure you don't ever let that go. Uh, with the content that you produce, you're getting some like 11 likes versus 100 views, pretty good. Look at all these comments as well. I mean, if you're sharing this with your friends and family and they're all commenting on it and look, cooking thing and cooking material, I'm sure they're on the live stream right now or have been previously in this, you're getting some really good engagement. So there were some good things to look at here uh, with your content. Awesome stuff. Fun some fundamental things you could fix would be, again, adding cards, Make sure that you're pushing audience to maybe a, your Valentine's prank if you're looking to do more content on that. End screens as well, but you're liking your comments as well, replying to them, which is brilliant stuff. Video tags, you could probably add a bit more to your video tags, like Easter egg, prank, or is this Easter egg rotten, rotten Easter eggs, uh, fresh Easter eggs, fresh or rotten Easter eggs many potential ideas for keywords that you could add there and on your description just capitalize on the description more youtube cannot necessarily do anything with this text here it needs more about it being an easter style video it needs to know more about it being potentially about rotten or fresh fresh eggs so yeah definitely a couple of things to look at there but I would say you had, I'm not sure if you still have it now, but when you were making videos, you had momentum through the content that you were producing and people were engaging with it to a fantastic level. So I hope, uh, Fab, uh, if you are going to do more videos, get back into it uh, as soon as you can. Maybe you're busy at the moment and a school is taking up too much of your time, but maybe over the summer months, if you can uh, contribute a lot of time and energy into that, that would be awesome. So good luck with your channel if you continue to work on it. All right, 
We are going to do next a vidIQ group therapy live stream whereby I bring up a channel and you get to comment on it as much as me. If you're not familiar with this, I'll be asking questions uh, about the channel uh, for you to try and answer. And uh, we are going to look at them as much as we can and share our thoughts. See what you've learned from... Hey, a player, have you ever... Whoops, share, share what you've learned from this live stream and apply it to uh, this uh, video, this channel that we're going to look at. So, are you ready? Let's jump into this one. Thank you, Doberman, for the suggestion. It is, not that one, it is The Josh Speaks. Wow, so we're looking at a channel with 120,000 subscribers. We made a significant leap here from channels uh, that were relatively small. Now we're looking at a big one. First of all, what are your thoughts on the general channel layout, the banner? Are you getting an idea of what this channel is about just from the things that we can see here? Uh, the Silent Wisher says the channel looks good. Uh, wow from Johnny Staccata. Staccata. Uh, holy smokes. Has a real audience. Oh, so Ginger's saying that the banner needs work. Why do you think the banner needs work? Uh, some people saying that the banner looks plain. In in what way do you look? What way do you think it looks plain? I guess from a video creator's perspective, it's a bit of a product plug rather than uh, the promoting the channel, uh, embracing the awkward. A guide for teens to succeed at school, life, and relationships. Maybe we need to take that as a value proposition for the channel and just make it a bit more viewable on the on on here. It could be uh, from from the from like an audience point of view, and on a mobile device, certainly it'd be very difficult to read anything in in the book there. Uh, everything April says, I feel the banner is good enough, draws you to the important info, which is interesting. Uh, I see nothing wrong with the banner. It's nice and neat, some people say. Others saying they like the colours, and yeah, I think there's a good contrast here uh, between the yellow and the blue. I think that looks good. Uh, let's have a look at the About section, just find out a little bit more about this uh, channel. Uh, a weekly vlog series teaching the values of confidence, mindfulness, and compassion to teens and young adults. Okay, what do you think of the uh, the value proposition there? Do you think it's specific enough? Do you think it has enough energy and power? Uh, what do you think of how that helps define the channel? Some people are saying it looks more like a Facebook page. Alejandro is agreeing with the colors on the banner. Some people thinking that the uh, v, uh, the banner has nothing to do with the logo, possibly. DIYJ says it's amazing we need this knowledge for sure. Certainly, certainly, a very target audience focused and a strong message uh, value proposition there. Absolutely. Let's have a look at the hey, a player. video. Have you here. ever wanted to tell your crush how you felt, but you weren't sure whether you should do it directly, as in tell them to their face, or indirectly, as in give them a note? Well, Dark Memes 1226 asked me this. Do you think writing a note to your crush is a good thing to do, or will it be bad? I have pretty mixed thoughts on that, but I'm gonna share them with you right after this. This is the Just Beef. you're watching the Just Beef. Not exactly a channel trailer video, but what did you think to the introduction of this video? Did it help, again, define the value of the content that you're going to see on the Josh Speaks channel? I agree with you there. Everything April says, the engagement with people from other social media is great. Absolutely. When... An audience starts to see themselves appearing in the content. That gives them so much of a lift. And it makes other audience members think, hmm, if maybe if I interact with this channel, which has 100,000 subscribers, and then I get a shout out, that would be awesome. It's, 
it's a really good and relatively easy way to get your audience more involved and engaged in your content, which is brilliant. Some people saying they're not too sure with that intro. Is there any particular reason you think that, uh, Toxic Chris uh, 280? Uh, so Johnny Staccata is saying that it seems to be a specific topic related to embracing the awkward. I think absolutely. Embracing the awkward was teased in that intro, I think. Yeah, so Humbly Driven Media, this isn't necessarily a channel intro, I don't think. But as an introduction to a video, I think it did uh, help define what the rest of the channel might be about. Um if you were watching a video for the first time. I mean, let's play it for another 20 seconds and see if the Josh, Josh Speaks talks a little bit more about his channel in general. For those of you that are new here, my name is Josh, and every single Monday through Friday, I make videos sharing tips, ideas, and stories teaching you how to be your best self. And when it comes to giving your crush a note to express how you feel, I've had a bad experience with that. I go. So there we are. Right after the splash intro of the video, he talks about what his channel's about. And his managed to do that within 40 seconds, so that is relatively similar to a channel trailer. And I'd, I'm seeing a few comments here, such as uh, Fre Fre Freezer Rules, Embracing the Awkward, Welcome, welcome to My Life. Uh, and so people are resonating with the content, so it feels as if we definitely have a value proposition which is clearly identified within the first five minutes of looking at this channel. Let's have a look at the uh, thumbnails in general, see what we think of the strength, the themes, the branding of these thumbnails. How would you say they fit into what we've been talking about throughout this live stream? Everything April is saying again, so a lot of feedback coming from Everything April. He smiles a lot, which people often forget to do. You are absolutely right. That's one of the things I forget and struggle with when I'm on camera. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, smiling at the camera makes people on the other side feel happy. It's also relating well with the audience. I think that's excellent feedback. I need to do that myself. Now, that looks a little fake, doesn't it? Thumbnails look great, according to Pacific North Northwest Granny. And Nerd Schmerd, I like the bright colours and text. It may be a little too much, but it looks good. Yeah, I mean, you have to consider that you're competing against other, other thumbnails and too much at least gets you noticed uh, to begin with. Oh, thank you, April. I, I have an acceptable smile. Um... You like the expressive faces and the constant vertical text on the left with bright colours. So yeah, we're, we're talking about uh, these uh, bits here. So there's not much text, like um, that, that is the branding essentially. That is uh, the Josh Beats logo on the side with a border and the blending in. And yeah, it, it's like a, a similar default fundamentals in each of them. The black logo, the expression of Josh, the fact that he cuts himself out of the background and has a stroke effect, so he really does contrast well with the background. And each of these backgrounds, the, the colour theme is awesome. Everything going really well there. Thumbnails are great. Like the bright colours. Yep. Yeah. All good stuff here. What do you think of the titles? Do you think the, uh, the titles help complement the uh, videos or is there too much text on the thumbnails? How do we feel about the storytelling of the titles and the thumbnails? For me personally, I, can, I like this as an example, how to message a girl for the first time. And then we have some hints of what you might say and quite why you would send that to a girl when you're... Um, uh, for the first time, I'm not quite sure, but it's a kind of a little humorous air, and it's not just regurgitating the text of the title. So, 
some feedback here that the titles may need to be more uh, more snappy. Titles are almost duplicated of the thumbnails. Yeah, that's kind of what I was leading to with uh, some of the suggestions there. I think this one is an example of where the title isn't regurgitated on the thumbnail, but in other examples, uh, maybe it is a little too too much of a repeating. Oh, let's just try it again. Where the title is just repeating the the uh, thumbnail a little bit. So five things you must do before school year ends. Maybe you want to have like an image of one of the things you may do as the year ends, rather than just repeating the text. I would agree with that on on the certain to a certain expect to certain extent. I like the capital letters in the middle of some of the titles. Stand. It stands out since it's words like you it makes it quite personal so it stands out more lots of awesome stuff here coming from everything april and um, um, what what they're talking about here is when you're just looking at one adjective to really emphasize a point on the title or one phrase or keyword so i think there's some good examples there let's have a look at maybe one video in particular Let's go for, let's go for five most common mixed signals from your crush. Hey, a player, mixed signals are probably the most common reasons why you tend to overthink things with your crush. So today I wanted to go over the five most common mixed signals that you've probably encountered and how to deal with them. This is the Just Beats, you're watching the Just Beats. For those of you that are new here, my name is Josh, and every single Monday... Okay, let's have a look at the tags, titles, descriptions, any particular thoughts on uh, what we're doing here. Seem to be longer tail keywords, mixed signals from crush, mixed signals from your crush, mixed signals from girls, mixed signals from guys, crush sending mixed signals, Girl sending mixed signals, very, very specific keywords on the idea of mixed signals, uh, which I think is fairly effective. We can see that some of these videos are ranking, which is awesome. This setup uh, is good, according to Pacific Northwest Granny. And some people saying that um, they may take Josh as an example of how to do an intro to their video, which is awesome stuff. So some good, some good template stuff here coming from the channel. Video quality is great. The intro is great. It's very active. Um, intro has a lot going on, yet simple, draws you in a bit. And yeah, I would just add that the, the title, five most common mixed signals from your crush does reflect the video tags and in turn want to know why your crush gives you mixed signals that is again reinforced in the uh, description so lots of excellent work here in terms of reinforcing the um, metadata so not only is the video content good here but also it's been backed up by strong evidence from the um from the youtube fundamentals the metadata and so on now one thing I would say, oh, just one more thing to know as well. Look at how how many of the creator suggested videos that Josh Speaks has. It's like he really has a strong authority on this topic and is doing very well in his field because all of the suggested videos almost are all of his. So that's awesome for potential additional session watch time as well. Now, the one thing I would say about all of this is I have a question here about the content. The Josh Speaks has 120,000 hey, subscribers. The content is awesome. Uh, you have a book that's been published. However, the view counts seem relatively low. You, it doesn't seem the audience doesn't seem to be really sticking with you in terms of uh, views. And I was wondering why that is. Is it your, are you gaining subscribers from off of YouTube, which is perhaps 
blurring the subscriber base a little bit. That might be something that's interesting to see. Um, it looks here as if uh, you gained um, a lot of subscribers at one point, but average subscribers on a daily basis seems relatively low. So I'd interest, be interested to know how we got to this stage with so many subscribers. Um, if I go to like the most popular videos, did they all subscribe off of one video? Like you were making videos a long time ago. So here's an interesting thing. Were you making videos a long time ago and you stopped making videos and you lost like your momentum as a video creator? And are you only just starting to build up that momentum uh, as you start again? Because these thumbnails and the content looks very similar to what it was five years ago. Look at the number of views you were getting for a lot of these videos in the hundreds of thousands. But it looks as if something happened at some point where you had where you had to stop. And I'm just wondering, um, is that what caused the channel in terms of current momentum to be a little stagnant in that respect? I'm just going to quickly search through, see if we can find any big gaps in your contents. doesn't look like it. We can see when you started to re redesign your thumbnails as well, sort of around here. It went from a kind of a dark, moody, white and yellow font to more of a um, vibrant energy colors. So that's good to see. Still just looking, I mean, you've been producing videos on a very consistent basis for a long time as well. For over a year, but it seems like the momentum has slowed down on your channel. So, and there might just be an interesting question behind the scenes there as to why this channel in terms of view count isn't uh, as successful as it maybe previously was. So something to maybe think about there. So thank you everybody. Uh, for your suggestions. Oh, and hi, Josh. I can see you posting some comments there. Uh, yeah, I, I can see the Tim Schmoyer influence there, definitely, uh, on your on your um, videos. And you're saying that the view count started to slow down in 2015-16. I, I wonder why that is. Maybe there's uh, uh, a new competitor in your space who's maybe um, taking away all your comment all your views or something it just seems as if your subscriber base has kind of abandoned you and you're almost running at uh, like a 10 to 20,000 subscriber channel rather than a 100,000 subscriber one obviously something uh, that we you would need to maybe research and, and find out why anyway thank you for all of that wonderful advice and suggestions and feedback and uh, seems as if everything April was certainly on top of uh, the uh, feedback there. And maybe for the next uh, live stream review, everything April, uh, we'll pick you uh, being our most valuable poster today. Anyway, we're coming towards the end of this live stream. I do hope you enjoyed it. As always, on a Tuesday, 11 p.m., uh, not 11 p.m., 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, we review channels uh, from the vidIQ community. And I hope all of the people who've got advice today find it useful. And anybody who was unfortunate not to get a channel review today, I hope you found all of the advice we've given you on this live stream useful. If you want more tips and tricks, then make sure to subscribe to vidIQ if you haven't already done so. We produce videos on a nearly daily basis on how to grow your channel. And of course, all of the tools that you've seen here uh, in this live stream that are not part of YouTube, they are part of the vidIQ Chrome extension, um, which will help you get more views in less time. It's free to download, a link in the description. Download it if you haven't already done so. Just leaves me to say thank you very much to the Doberman guy for his awesome moderating as usual and every single one of you on the live stream today. I'll be back next week for another channel review live stream. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your video making day and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.